Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this momentous occasion. Our announcement of the Prime Design Consulting Team for the Arts Commons Transformation Project, lovingly known as ACT. My name is Alex Sarian, and I'm the President and CEO of Arts Commons, and I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a bit about me. I was born in Toronto, the original home of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I was raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the original home of the Toba people, and I spent a large part of my career in New York City, which is the unceded territory of the Leni Lenape people, the Canarsi, Munsi, Matanaycock, Maspeth, and Rockaway nations. Today, I stand on the land that will be the future home of the Arts Commons expansion. This land and the land that surrounds me is also the original home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprised of the Siksika, Pekani, and Kainai First Nations, the Stony Nakoda, comprised of the Chiniki, Wesley, and Bearpaw First Nations, and the Tsutina First Nations. This territory is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3, within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. Now I share this information because I believe it's important for us to understand the long-standing history that has brought us to live, work, and play on this land, and to understand our place within that history. Calgary is in Treaty 7 territory, Treaty 7 being the last of the numbered treaties made between the Government of Canada and the Plains First Nations in the fall of 1877. While we can acknowledge that this is Treaty 7 territory, it's also important to acknowledge that due to cultural and language differences, each treaty member had a different understanding of the negotiations that led to the signing of the treaty, with First Nations primarily understanding it to be a peace treaty and not a surrender of the land. With this knowledge, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize this unresolved history, to thank these First Nations for sharing this land with us, and to publicly commit to being good stewards of this land while we are here. Through deep consultation and deep involvement, the Arts Commons Transformation Project will include the First Nations of Treaty 7 in the planning of this expansion and ensure Indigenous ways of knowing and being are reflected in the design. Our goal is to create spaces that bring people together around a shared commitment to sanctified kindness and respect for all existence. Where making relatives with one another transcends notions of allyships and partnerships. And where we recognize that being a social business does not just impact what we do on stage, but more importantly, how we work behind the scenes. I can't wait for you to meet the team that we've carefully chosen to ensure that we embrace these commitments responsibly. Now, I'd like to welcome Mayor Gondak to say a few words. Hello everyone and welcome to the Arts Commons Prime Design Team announcement. I'm thrilled to be joining you all today and having the opportunity to highlight the role this important civic project plays for our arts and culture community and the growth of our city. We have been waiting years for the Arts Commons Transformation Project, which makes today's announcement so exciting. Projects of this scale and complexity require a commitment to vision tenacity, and leadership to bring it to life. And the team at Arts Commons have been tireless champions for the importance and opportunity this transformation will bring, and it's becoming a reality. Phase one is fully funded, and the teams are underway. From a broader Calgary perspective, the two-phase $450 million Arts Commons project is a significant city-building project that aligns with our commitment to the growth and recovery of our downtown. As one of the major catalyst projects within the Greater Downtown Plan and as a symbol of Calgary's commitment and investment to the arts. Over the past two years, we've seen the toll the pandemic has taken on the arts community and on all of us. We're yearning for the return to live arts, music, and cultural experiences. We have missed them dearly. The Arts Commons transformation gives us the opportunity to learn from the experiences of the pandemic and craft a design for a world-class facility that is right for Calgary and at the time when we need it the most. From when Arts Commons first opened its doors in 1985 to today, our city has grown and evolved. We've seen the role the arts play in our communities, our schools and our own families. This expansion project helps bolster the livability and quality of life for Calgarians 
through increased access to the arts and to cultural experiences. Arts Commons will also have an immediate and positive impact on our economy during construction, including $424 million contributed to Alberta's GDP, $41 million in Alberta government revenues, 3,454 jobs created in Alberta, $263 million in Alberta labour income. Today, I'm thrilled to see the selection of a dynamic, experienced and diverse design team at the starting gates for the design process, which I'm certain will result in an equally dynamic design fitting for Arts Commons, one that Calgarians will be proud of. And most importantly, I'm confident in the collaboration between our committed project partners leading this work, CMLC, Arts Commons, and the City of Calgary. This is a team of placemakers and city builders whose experience, vision, and creativity is just the right mix for a bold future for Arts Commons. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gondek. We are so grateful to have the full support of City Council, a council that truly understands the value and importance of the arts in building a great city. I've now been in Calgary for almost two years and have met so many wonderful people during this time. When I talk about the Arts Commons Transformation Project, or ACT, some have asked the question, why do we need this and why now? ACT marks a new era for Arts Commons, Western Canada's largest performing arts centre. Arts Commons, in partnership with the City of Calgary and Calgary Municipal Land Corporation, are working in concert to realize this landmark transformation, the most significant arts facility development currently underway in Canada, and it's long overdue. Arts Commons opened its doors over 35 years ago in 1985 with the goal of serving a community of approximately 300,000 patrons annually. Calgary's population was 656,000. Today, we have a population of over 1.3 million and have maximized all available capacity. We're turning away approximately 600 events annually, leaving the community without access to a central gathering space and Arts Commons without the ability to generate an economic ripple effect. ACT is a two-phase project that will both expand our presence in Calgary and completely modernize our current facility. The team you're going to be meeting today will be guiding the overall design of what will become an Arts Commons campus in the heart of our downtown core. While the second phase will focus on the modernization of our almost 40-year-old home, the first phase will provide much-needed increase in the number of theatrical venues and informal gathering spaces. The additional 25 to 35 percent in seating capacity, along with welcoming public spaces, will create a vibrant and exciting arts and culture hub where all Calgarians and visitors alike can interact and engage with innovative and world-class artists and arts organizations, including our amazing resident companies, Alberta Theatre Projects, Arts Commons Presents, Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra, Downstage, One Yellow Rabbit, and Theatre Calgary. As Mayor Gondak mentioned, ACT has been identified as a pivotal project for downtown Calgary's revitalization. Returning Calgary to a position of economic strength requires a strong and vibrant arts and culture scene to attract and retain people and companies. As a fully funded project phase, the expansion of Arts Commons is a critical step in building a successful future for this great city. And I couldn't be happier to share this moment with all of you. Now, I'll hand things over to Kate Thompson of CMLC to tell you more about the project and introduce you to the team. CMLC is in the enviable position of leading some of Calgary's most important city building projects. Projects like the Central Library, St. Patrick's Island that welcomes thousands of visitors each year, to the expansion of the new BMO Centre, now underway, and now the Arts Commons Transformation. These are critical projects that aren't only an investment in the growth of communities like East Village, Calgary's Culture and Entertainment District, and our downtown core, but Calgary as a whole. We are proud to be managing over $1 billion in city building projects that will be transformational to the long-term growth and identity of Calgary. Our goal with any project, small or large, isn't only driven by architecture or design, but by the experience it creates for its visitors, both inside 
and outside the building. Creating parks and public spaces and buildings that are as welcoming as they are active and engaging for the people they serve. Today, I'm thrilled for the team at CMLC to be working alongside our partners at the City and Arts Commons in announcing the architectural design team who will help us envision a new future for Arts Commons. Over the past year and a half, we've been undertaking work that helps us prepare for this stage, public engagement to understand what works today and what will work better in the future, what's missing and what's sacred. We've analyzed the critical functions and operations that need to be in place for an expanded Arts Commons to flourish for decades to come. We've analyzed the site and the opportunities and the challenges that come from being adjacent to major civic places like Olympic Plaza, Stephen Avenue, and our neighbors. We've invested in ensuring the right team members are in place to bring this vision to life. A team that understands the significance of this project and the opportunity it presents, along with the experience to help us make it possible. In late 2021, together with our project partners, we selected a prime design team and construction management team that will lead the design process for Arts Commons. In selecting this team, we had 29 teams from across the world respond to our RFP. World-class designer teams with deep experience and bold visions for Arts Commons. Alongside our partners at Arts Commons in the City of Calgary, we went through a rigorous evaluation process and interview process to find the right team. The right team is of critical importance to us at CMLC. We wanted a team that saw the value in working as a partnership, an integrated team that would leverage their collective experience and ideas to create the best design that fits Calgary and Arts Commons. A true understanding of our local culture and community, along with the vision and foundation to blend vision with function, design and activation with architecture and functional program. Today, the awarded Prime Design team is with us, virtually, so we can finally share this exciting news. I'm so pleased to announce the Prime Design team of KPMB, based in Toronto, Hindle Architects here in Calgary, Tawa Architecture, based out of Arizona, and SLA from Copenhagen. This team will be supported through pre-construction planning with Calgary-based PCL Construction. This prime design team is unique in their structure, a truly integrated team whose collective experience and background in the planning, design and delivery of arts-focused facilities has transformed such notable venues as Massey Hall and the Banff Centre for Arts and Creativity. It is also a team that has prioritized major components to this project, including arts and theatre design, shaped by some of the world's most innovative art centre with an understanding of future-focused needs. Having Hindle architects who have built a practice here in Calgary and appreciate the needs of our local community is critical. The Indigenous perspective and intercultural considerations. Tawa's principal was Canada's first female Indigenous architect and brings Indigenous experience and ways of knowing to this process that will be integral to our process and landscape design supported by SLA. The success of this building is as much about the interior as it is about how it meets the exterior. And on behalf of CMLC, the City of Calgary and Arts Commons, I'm so pleased to be introducing this team to Calgary today. We are at the start line of design and are committed to the tremendous potential that this project brings to Arts Commons and to our city. I hope you'll join us in this journey. Thank you, Kate, and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, before I jump in, I'd like to share that as of right now, we have over 320 viewers from around the world tuning in. So I'm so glad that you were able to join us. Um, as Claire and Kate mentioned, I'd like to tell you a little bit about each member of the Prime Design team before we dive into our panel discussion. 
Jesse Hindle of Hindle Architects is based in Calgary and has 17 years experience working locally, nationally, and internationally on a variety of architectural and redesign projects. ACT will benefit greatly from Jesse's knowledge and experience with Calgary's design and construction industry, our climate and culture, municipal and building approval processes, local building codes, and his relationships with local authorities. Jesse, welcome. Next, I'd like to introduce Rasmus Astrup of SLA Architecture out of Denmark. SLA is an internationally renowned nature-based design studio that includes 130 landscape architects, biologists, anthropologists, and city planners. As we develop the design and plan for ACT, SLA will explore possibilities of biodiversity within Calgary's urban context. I'd also like to introduce you to Marianne McKenna from KPMB Architects, who will act as prime design consultant. KPMB, based in Toronto, has designed over 21 theater and performance spaces and more than 30 complex urban projects of equivalent scale to act. Marianne has over 40 years of experience, including a 20 year journey with the Royal Conservatory to realize the master plan vision for the iconic Kerner Concert Hall. Leadership for the majority of KPMB's cultural performing arts projects, including Massey Hall, lies with Marianne. And finally, I am thrilled to introduce you to Wanda Della Costa, founding partner of Tawa Architecture Collective, an indigenous owned firm specializing in indigenous architecture. As Kate mentioned, Wanda is the first First Nations woman to become an architect in Canada. She is a member of the Saddle Lake First Nation and practiced in Calgary for 12 years prior to moving south to Arizona. Tawa will partner with KPMB as co-design director through all phases, guiding and leading continuous engagement sessions and workshops with indigenous elders, artists, and communities of Calgary, validating design outcomes and interweaving indigenous knowledge and values. Now, please join me in welcoming the team and please welcome Marianne and Wanda to our virtual stage. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and thank you to Kate and to Mayor Gondek and to Claire for that kind of brilliant introduction. I guess I don't have to say too much about each of us, but I hope that through this presentation, I can communicate the the, the honor that we feel and the excitement and the passion that we have for this project. Wanda, well, Just to do start with Thank you, Marianne. Just to start with an acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territories of the Siksika, Pakani, and Kainai First Nations, the Stony Nakoda, comprised of Chiniki, Wesley, Bearspaw First Nations, and the Sutina First Nation. The confluence of the Bow and Elbow Rivers acted as a traditional gathering space for these Treaty Seven Nations. As Arts Commons is located in this traditional territory, we join in this spirit of gathering with respect for these First Nations. Aye, aye. So of and for Calgary, there you have the confluence of the Bow and Elbow Rivers. Our practices are all are very much committed to cities. So our commitment is very much to seeing the transformation of arts commons within the city of Calgary and a deep understanding. So our team is composed, Hindle Architects and Wanda of Tawau are very important components of, of that, a deeper. And we know that the arts are stimulate the economy. We're also very impressed that the average age of Calgarians is 38 years old. So we know we're actually talking to a very young and spirited community with great depth in its older community. So very exciting to us to... to so as we pursued this project, we listened very closely to the broadcast that came from Alex Arian. Uh, they're saying my broad my internet connection's unstable. Hopefully, hopefully this is okay. Um, so breaking down the barriers, that idea that if we create great, a great heart to a city, if we reinvigorate with pl places for people to go, that this will become, this will magnetize the heart of our city. So location is very important that it doesn't feel too far for anyone to come downtown and to actually have the, a suite of, of wonderful things happening that include uh, being at the, uh, the transformation of Arts Commons and its theaters, the modernization of its existing theaters. And 
uh, feel that they are, you know, both welcome and encouraged to be there and that you can spend the afternoon in downtown Calgary. Financial barriers exist and have existed, and that would be one that we would also try to break down is to create spaces that the public feel welcome to come to walk through. Um, I'm showing you an image of the Royal Conservatory where the space between the theater and the heritage building is, is a, a public promenade, a passage through that leads you not only to concert halls, but to a downtown cafe. And is a kind of secret spot, almost a destination off Philosopher's Walk that's used by the broadest community. Part of that is having, part of the attraction is having not only performance spaces and a, and a conservatory of students, but also educational spaces. And Alex is very committed to having those spaces be something that animates uh, Arts Commons, the new uh, expansion of Arts Commons during daytime hours. And to break down that feeling of, I don't belong here. I think the ability of spaces like I'm showing you where we have Nuit Blanche going on, uh, you know, brings the broadest community downtown to offer those kind of transformative uh, opportunities within the within Arts Commons. Mm -hmm. So this is um, our, our, our team and Alex has spoken about how it is an integrated team that does break down the barrier. So this is the art gallery of an image from the art gallery of Nova Scotia. And just to suggest that the world is changing. We formed a team with a local architect and with indigenous leaders, elders and artists from the Mi'kmaq community and created spaces, proposed spaces like this, which actually are those kinds of spaces that break down barriers An open communal lobby that's connected back to the waterfront and the city of Halifax, and actually is a space where you don't have to buy a ticket where you can actually flow through and, and enjoy public space, an extension of the public realm into our most public buildings. Sorry, it's not changing quite as Uh, so let me introduce our team. Uh, Alex has done a brilliant job, but the leadership from KPMB includes myself, Chris Kaus, who uh, will lead the management of the project, and Kevin Bridgman, who and you will meet Wanda in a minute, um, our sort of cherished collaborator and ideator around the, the proposition that's been laid in front of us, the design challenges. You've met Jesse Hindle and his wife, Laura, who are local architects. And I think the most important is being young in a city like Calgary, longevity and to the future of a building like this. And then Rasmus, with whom we are already working on many projects because of his unique ability sitting on the edge of Olympic Plaza. We are surrounded by public realm. And so his contributions from, as we work through, we work for months together to actually uh, think about how we would approach our, our attitude to this project. Uh, sorry, my slides aren't changing very well. So we call ourselves uh, the Team Act. Uh, we are uh, Indigenous, Canadian, and Nordic. And I think this shows you that we can, we've can. we brought together uh, four principal firms to work on this project, as well as a, a very deep suite of specialist consultants. And we see it, it we are, have been collaborating, as you know, since the fall uh, to work together and integrating our teams so that they flow across all of each of the offices. Okay. We are very excited to be a part of the ACT redevelopment. To us, this represents a new era, and this is an opportunity for to rethink equity, diversity, and inclusion in, a, in the built environment. Many of you here know the term place making, but our team prefers the, to use the word place keeping and place knowing. Of course, we are an Indigenous centric firm. We have a lot of Indigenous designers that work with us, and what we're trying to see if there are alternatives to what our current cities are and aspire to be. Can cities be more inclusive? Can they prioritize belonging? Can they use the generations of understanding that have been built up in each place in order to recreate a city? To our team, placekeeping means that we are concerned con and we will remain concerned with keeping memories of a local alive while collecting, connecting to local understandings, including histories. Place knowing to us 
is the practice in which traditional knowledge informs the way in which communities give meaning to the cultural landscape they use and inhabit and provide lessons for all of us who live in the city. There are many principles that will emerge, we think, from this process. And we believe that this work of indigenous design offers a new approach, a kind of an old new approach to contemporary life. One of the tenets of an indigenized approach is earth-centric design, which you see on the lower left on the slide. This to us means connecting with mother nature, using value systems, integrating humility and honoring all living things, a counter movement to sometimes what we see in typical cities of, that are gentrified and um, overdeveloped. We believe that this understated worldview that we will bring forward is a position that will align well with the general Canadian public. Through this work, we will aim to build into this project and hopefully in the city of Calgary, a storied landscape in which every place comes with a range of stories and songs associated with it. Our process always includes public engagement. And in this case, that we are in the case that we're aiming to integrate indigenous ways of knowing, we will be having conversations in the community over the next year or so, starting tonight. The aim is to examine pathways, Indigenous design thinking pathways. We will be weaving Indigenous knowledges, values, both in the process, but hopefully also in the final product. Some of the aspects that we hope to connect to in this engagement process that we are undertaking before we begin design are, are there Indigenous-centric activities that we can integrate? Is, are there additional meanings connected to worldview, identity, the way we use space? Are there new ways of bring, thinking about materiality, connecting to indigenous aesthetics or materials and form? And finally, the worldview, can we bring the knowledges from our communities uh, in service of Calgary's future? Together, we believe this process and the the learnings that we collect will enable us to add value from an Indigenous perspective to the ACT project. So when Wanda talks about Earth-centric design, we, we consider sustainability to be fundamental to this project, environmental sustainability, as well as economic and social. But we have begun already to understand what the site offers us in terms of, us, of an environment and the proximity to Olympic Plaza is a wonderful opportunity. So we're studying sun and wind and the environmental conditions. So we make a building that actually connects and, and defers to the, the urban environment in which we are living and improves that urban environment. And Erasmus is very much a part of that future. So, we have, we have begun now. This is, we began when we were engaged actually in the fall, but a slide that we wanted to, to put up was to say we, it's a starting point. So we very much welcome the level of engagement that we've been offered through the indigenous community and through the, the broader community and the community that exists around Arts Commons because there is a, so much uh, intelligence that already exists within. So we begin uh, with humility and with deference to understanding exactly where we are and why we're here. So we created a number, we begin with these design principles, um, really cartoon kinds of ideas that we, in a sense, they are our charter of our values, you know, of and for Calgary, thinking about inclusive design and how we break down barriers you know, offering the existing com arts commons buildings with its multiple theaters uh, as a kind of common front port to Olympic Plaza. And as we go through a modernization of the existing buildings, how do we integrate those theaters into a kind of bigger vision? How do we bring city nature into uh, the project and design with climate? creating a kind of very much an outward expression that is transparency, that you understand the kind of connections and common levels that exist. And I think those have been obscured over, over time, but perhaps the opportunity is here to actually dramatically change the way Arts Common is perceived in the city. So ground floor porosity, being able to, whoops, one back please. Uh, ground floor porosity, the opportunity to be able to walk through the Arts Commons, I think is a very important one. 
we understand the plus 15 network and how it works to serve the population of a, in a cold climate. We also understand the opportunities to make that movement, to, to not be walking through empty corridors, but to have each one of those plus 15, or may I say public corridors, really uh, participate in the animation of what's happening as you cross through Earth's Commons. So we're looking at the levels from the foyer, from the ground floor foyers to the lobbies of each theater up to the plus 15. We're looking for daytime animators, daytime and nighttime animators, uh, a lot of that coming from the performance component, but to add in other programmatic elements that include the education, which will bring a lot of animation to the site. And what we see now are individual patron spaces, individual lobbies that relate to the Jack Singer, to the, the Max, to the engineered air, to the um, Martha Cohen. And we're looking at those individual lobbies and we think, how can we use those? How can we create a kind of hybrid model where each one of those lobbies actually connects to the other one and to the new theater uh, and black box across the street, the expansion of Arts Common. So as we go through these design principles, sort of stay on our slides because they are fundamentally our commitment to the project. So to end, um, we picked up on this tweet from Alex from um, July last year. Science will get us out of this, but the arts will get us through it. Pass it on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marianne and Wanda. And I know that we've spoken many times um, and I've seen that presentation many times, but I could, I could just do that over and over again. Uh, the excitement is so palpable. Now, um, I know that we were meant to have an in-person gathering as Claire mentioned in December, but now that you're familiar with the team a little bit and their experience, we're gonna have an open discussion uh, uh, with our panel about the project. When we sent out invitations to this event, we invited everybody to submit any burning questions that you might have. Uh, and thankfully we received an amazing amount of feedback. Unfortunately, due to time limitations, we won't be able to ask every question that was submitted today, but we have included those that were asked by several of you. So hopefully you'll see those uh, questions come up in some way, shape or form. So let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna throw out the first question to everybody on the team. As Kate mentioned earlier, there was an extensive procurement process in selecting uh, this team. Uh, your leadership, experience, and approach certainly made us lean heavily in your direction, but ultimately it was your passion for this project that sealed the deal. Can you tell me, each of you, in a few words, why this project piqued your interest and why you were so interested uh, in working in Calgary? And Marianne, I'll start with you. Well, I would just say personally, I've been trying to work in Calgary for 15 years. I had to wait until the environment was was ready. But I think really for me, it was the fact that this project was not only performing arts, but so much community based. So thinking about what the arts can do from, for community and seeing Calgary at this particular moment in time as being incredibly receptive. The city, you know, our cities evolve. And I think there is a, the right moment to do a project like this. So for it's really that to modernize and expand the offering that Art Commons presents. Thanks. And so, Marianne, that's a perfect segue. Kate, from a CMLC perspective, um, why this project? Why now? Why not? I mean, this is Arts Commons. It's right at the heart of our city. I think uh, everyone who works at CMLC feels privileged to do the work we're doing um, and the work we have done. Uh, I think the, the library project's a great example. A few blocks to the east, we, we were able to transform that block and work collaboratively with that team. And I, I saw a lot of the same approaches to this team and the and just a different time of in the world and a different uh, location in Calgary and so when CMLC was tapped to uh to lead this project with Arts Commons and the city of Calgary yes please this is a, excellent what an opportunity thank you Wanda I'd like to throw the question over to you yeah, well, I think, you know, what's really, well, I guess there are two things. First, it feels like home. You know, I have family in that city. I have a lot of friends. I lived there for uh, over a decade. Um, but I think from a professional perspective, this is really an interesting project because, um, you know, bringing in Indigenous ways of knowing means there's an opportunity for what we love to embark on, which we call productive disruption. What does the future bring if you really start to poke at it in an urban environment? So I think there's this sort of professional challenge, but I think there's also a urban cultural diversity challenge that is 
really intriguing to me. There's so many nations that live there. How do we begin to really honor not only the hosts, but make it really inclusive to everyone who lives there? So from a professional perspective, I think that's that's where, where I'm extremely interested in going. Thanks, Wanda. And I'm so excited that, that we get to have these conversations. Uh, speaking of the local ecosystem, uh, Jesse, over to you. Oh, you're on mute. I can't. Two he years. You were still at work. Of course I am. Of course I am. There's the icebreaker. You know, I, Calgary is home for us, not just Laura and I, but for our entire team. And uh, we're deeply committed to its future. So to be here with the team today to talk about this transformational project and the way that it can affect, I think, the future of our city and the rejuvenation more specifically of our urban center is huge. To create greater access for the arts, and to really just bind our communities together, to be part of that is incredibly thrilling. And, and so we're just delighted to be here with this team today. Thanks, Jesse. And Rasmus, you are many hours ahead of us. Uh, I, I'm thrilled <laughs> you're able to join us. Uh, uh, I'd like to pose, uh, I'd like to have you answer this question. Yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, it's uh, such a pleasure being here. I, my first uh, passion about this uh, uh, project started with my passion about the team that I'm collaborating with because they are not just collaborators they're great friends and and just the fact that they they invite a, an odd one out like me a landscape architect into a building uh, a project is showing the holistic approach that it's needed for this project this site I would also say my excitement is definitely also about that site that site in the city. Uh, so it, it, it's so uh, interesting. There's a history, uh, both a present and a very long one that Wanda also mentioned, but the site itself is really, really something that excites me. Thank you. And it's so exciting. I mean, we're certainly talking about the future of the arts, but we're also talking about the future of cities and the future of Calgary and how they inform each other. I, just having everybody on screen is, is uh, I might start crying. Um, but, I, but I won't, and I'll move on to the next question. Um, and this one's for Jesse from Hindle Architects. Jesse, Hindle has completed a variety of complex urban projects. What experience from your local context do you feel is important in bringing to this larger team and to the project? Yeah, I think the most important thing that we can bring to the project and to the team is, and it's been mentioned a few times before here, um, you know, it's about how we root this project in its place, how we create a, you know, a place that is of and for Calgary. And that's borrowing your words and some of what Marianne's mentioned previously. So, you know, architectural design is one thing, but we need to make sure that this is a place that is reflective of Calgarians. It understands our climate, our economy, um, and the vision for the future of our city. And so as local representatives, so to speak, working within this integrated team, I think we have a lot to offer in that way. And, and the project will be better for it. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Uh, my next question is uh, for Kate. Um, Kate, we've been talking about this for uh, almost two years and, and, and certainly well beyond that, but we're sitting here finally with the prime design team members uh, and we're at the start of the line for concept design. Talk, us, talk to us about what concept design means. What does this signify for the overall context of the project? And what are the next few months to the next few years have in store for us? I think this is this is the best time of a project that and kind of when we open and see Calgarians flooding into our space and see how they react to it. But this is full of potential, full of challenges and full of opportunities. And I think that that is the best part of any project, because how we all work together to solve some of those challenges and opportunities uh, and turn them into opportunities is really exciting. Um, it's also really daunting and it puts the pressure, Alex, on you and I and the city of Calgary to make some good decisions and to be city builders. And anyone who's built uh, in the city knows that city building is challenging. It's sometimes complex. And then sometimes it's us actually organically, the, the solution comes out of the site. So I, I think this is a, a, a time of high aspiration, high, high, um, high requirements of the team, including uh, Arts Commons, uh, CMLC and the city. And I'm excited by it. This is a really, really fun part of the project. And I'm glad to get started. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Kate. Uh, next question is uh, for Marianne. Marianne, um, we've all just experienced almost two years of a global pandemic that have changed lives, 
and collective perspectives in terms of how we design buildings and experiences. What are you seeing from a design perspective in the arts that will influence your approach to this project? Well, I think the pandemic, the isolation has thrown unbelievable challenges at us to communicate in different ways, obviously, you know, digitally, but, but also the need to come back face to face. So what I've seen is, um, you know, offices are no longer offices. They're not no longer just plain workspaces. They're changing into uh, questions about why, why should I be at the office? And creating the office spaces are transforming to be the place that you want to come because we all know that there are huge benefits to being together. So I would say um, the art spaces uh, make particular opportunity to make welcoming community spaces, spaces that can heal and welcome the broadest community. So accessibility and breaking down the barriers, as I mentioned before, are you know, very important uh, aspects of creating these new community spaces, but really blurring the lines between what is this space? This space isn't just a lobby that's uh, empty during the day and then fills up with people who are in the house, the theater house and come out. I think our spaces have to be something quite different. They have to be completely adaptable and we have to change in a sense it will ch they will change our behavior. Um, we're not asking people to change. The space will help people understand that they are welcome in these spaces. And I think we have a huge opportunity with, you know, Arts Commons being its proximity and its positioning really in Olympic Plaza gives us a, a new kind of topography to introduce back into this building. So we're, we're looking at post-pandemic um, that opportunity to have more people that Olympic Plaza draws, and it draws a huge number of people, but have them use the indoor spaces as well as part of that public realm opportunity. Thank you. Um, thanks, Marianne. Our next question is for Wanda. Um, Wanda, one of the requirements, as you know, that was critical to the project partners that went into the RFP was the um, for the design team is that, that the team bring an intercultural perspective. As we embark on the design, can you share with us um, how the team will approach integrating Indigenous experience and knowledge into our process and ultimately the project. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, I think there's a real um, switch when it comes to our methods. And I think um, what it examines is this notion of power shifting. It brings a real openness to um, integrating community members, their lived experience, um, there's also a mutual learning process that happens where we're not, you know, there is a back and forth that happens that is really, really different. And it, overall, it's aiming for transformation. This is the most important thing. And I think when we look at those new methods, when we start to bring in, you know, a broader perspective of voices to urban design and planning and architecture, you get new places to a, a new meaning start to come through every project. And that could be, you know, things like seven generations worldview. Um, it could be more value-based design. It offers us that sort of holistic reset, um, which Rasmus talked about, where we start to think of, of urban projects in a more comprehensive manner, that it is economic, it's cultural, it's social, it's symbolic, it's environmental. You know, it touches all of those aspects. And so I think that's what we're ultimately hoping for, is to really do a bit of a reset and get those, get some inspiration, that new meaning that comes from new methods. Yeah, thank you. And that's that's such an incredible, incredibly exciting part of of uh, of this project and, and of where we are today. Uh, my next question is for Rasmus. Rasmus, you know, at the beginning of the event, I briefly touched on the importance um, in Indigenous culture and, and Wanda's spoken about it, of the connection to the land and respect for all living beings. And we're certainly learning about this through the work that we do um, in our day to day with with uh, Indigenous communities. But our environment has a massive role to play in how we sustainably construct our homes and buildings. Can you tell us a little bit about your approach to this specific project as a nature-based design studio? Yeah, I think uh, I think the answer is in nature itself. Uh, there is both a memory of a place or place keeping, as as Wanda said. I mean, can you really feel? Calgary when you stand on the square on the Olympic Plaza today and what is the origin of, of, of a place uh, we believe that city nature is something uh, that we all share 
it's something that link brings diversity and inclusivity and it's also there you find some of the solutions for sustainability it's there where you have a way to react to the climate and actually adapt and be part of it because uh, i think some of the things i've learned by by working with with wonder and other amazing people is that for instance we have a whole time era now where we call for instance i've learned that I call it stormwater management, but it's just rain that falls from the sky. You know, we, we kind of separated ourselves from nature and thereby sometimes alter each other. And, and what we mean with city nature and, and nature-based design studio is to, to bring back that uh, uh, value to the site. And then I know I have a tendency to talk too long, but I think there's another very important element that that, that nature is also very well working with culture because it brings informality it drives social interaction so that frame is actually supporting our vision and our success with the project because we want to include people we want to create uh, we want to create a creative and innovative environment that's amazing and it's so exciting and and as somebody that's relatively new to calgary embracing the climate that is unique to calgary and making sure that people like marianne was talking about can engage with the arts and one another, even in the coldest winter months, is something that I think is so important to us as we think about the future of Calgary. So I, we have we have time for one more question um, uh, that was submitted by a member of our audience today. And Kate, I'll throw this one your way. Uh, from CMLC's perspective, how will you ensure that this project includes the most progressive and inclusive design for persons of all abilities? Oh, great question. Um, you know, I think it's always important when you're working on a public project to not only be aware, but to exceed expectations, exceed standards. And I know it's one of those areas in design and construction that has grown by leaps and bounds over the last few years. And CMLC is responsive to that. So in our RFP and engaged through the prime design consultants, we, uh, we've selected an accessibility consultant which will be integrated into this team and a part of it, which is a challenge when you're dealing with a new building in phase one, uh, a renovation and a connection of lobbies in phase two. And let's throw in uh, thinking about how we interact with the plaza as well. So it'll be a challenge for the team, but really important that we have that idea of the higher standards and also seeking Rick Hansen certification just allows us uh, to, to level the field and understand where we're going with it. So really big part of all of our work is accessibility. And I think we've talked a bit about the socioeconomic accessibility of this space and the spaces surrounding the heart of Calgary, but physical accessibility for all is really important and will be a challenge for this team and a challenge they're up for. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the question. I hope that Calgarians will continue to engage, uh, continue to uh, hold us accountable. Uh, so our last question, uh, again, is for the entire team, and it's uh, a little more personable, uh, personal, although I feel like we've been getting personal for the past, uh, <laughs> so which is amazing, and I think speaks to how successful uh, this team is. Um, but in a few words, what are you most excited about as we sit at the starting line for the design stage of this project? Um, so really, uh, um, you know, we, even though we've been working for, for quite a bit together, we really are at a jumping off point. And so as you look ahead, what are you most excited about? And I'll start um, uh, with Jesse uh, from Hindle. It's a, it's a good question, Alex. I guess for myself, uh, you know, I was fortunate to work abroad during the early years of my, uh, of my career. And, you know, having spent time working in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom on cultural projects, and, you know, these were moments or this was the time where I learned about the profound impact that cultural institutions can play in the life of the city. Um, and I believe that Arts Commons can play this role here in Calgary. And I think as a group, we understand it goes way beyond, you know, uh, formalized events at certain times of the day. And then it can, you know, extend into how cultural institutions or how Arts Commons can play a significant role in the day-to-day -day lives of Calgarians, how we can create a place that's welcoming and inspiring and, and for people to see a place for themselves, uh, you, know, you know, in Arts Commons. So we're really excited about that and about the future of this, uh, this place and this project for our city. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, Marianne, over to you. 
Well, I think um, I, I'm excited about the fact that this is a restart. You know, this project, you know, I really what did watch it for four or five or seven years. I'm not sure I came and sort of looked. And and I think, you know, I, I think the world changes so rapidly. And I think we're at a very important inflection point, you know, brought on by the pandemic, honestly. Um, you know, Calgary is a different city than it was 10 years ago. So my excitement is really the fact of a restart. We have a almost a, new, a very new community of, of um, participants at within Arts Commons. We have you, Alex, the new the new leader. And I think, you know, that opportunity to restart this project and do something entirely different that is aligned with our times and looks to the future. That's huge. So very exciting. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, Rasmus, over to you, sir. Oh, man, I was not so fast yet. Well, I think I, I am very excited about challenging all the stakeholders, I mean, we heard values, the word values. I mean, this next phase is not about us sitting, sketching, it's this tall, and here you have a door, and this is a window. It's something else that happens now. It's about values. It's about what we can achieve together. So I am looking forward to not just challenge all of you with the ideas that I have and that we share in our design team, but definitely also to be challenged from all of you, from all the stakeholders, and to learn and to actually adapt and bring something back uh, from this experience. Thank you, Rasmus. Uh, Kate, over to you. Why do I have to follow Rasmus? That's not <laughs> fair. Um, I am privileged, CMLC is privileged to be standing on the shoulders of all of those that make a project like this happen. We've talked about decades in the making. It's so true, having now been involved from uh, for the last almost 10 years and, and many years preceding that, th these projects don't just happen. They, they take time and support. So I feel privileged. privileged. I also feel the enormous weight of the potential. So I'm excited by the potential and exploring what that is. So those are my two P words for you. Thanks, Kate uh, and Wanda. What about you? Thank you. Um, I think I would go, you know, I always say that I feel so lucky. Not only do I get to learn from my home community and my elders, it, when doing architecture, you get, I now get to sit in rooms with elders and community members and advisors and knowledge keepers and cultural brokers from all the different communities. What a blessing. And then after that, we get to sit in more rooms and to try and define how to co ideate, co-imagine, co-develop, and co-design cities and buildings together. It's just a remarkable. And so that is what I'm most excited about. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I know that I posed that question to our team, but if we were in a room together, like we were planning uh, on, on doing in December, and like we plan to do uh, very soon, um, I would ask all of you, Calgarians, and even beyond, um, uh, if you're tuning in, what are you most excited about? What would you like to see in Arts Commons? And, and how can we take not just the incredible insights and expertise from this team, but how can we take your goals and your ambitions and what you want Calgary to look like and make sure that it's embedded into this project? So uh, I asked that question somewhat rhetorically, but I also um, I know that throughout this entire session, we've been getting really engaging comments throughout from the public. Um, so in addition to thanking the team, I wanna thank all of you uh, for joining us. I want to thank all of you for your comments. Please keep them coming well beyond today um, uh, because we need them. Uh, if we are going to be of and for Calgary, we need all of your insights and perspectives. But I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody. Kate from CMLC, Jesse from Hindle, Marianne from KPMB, Rasmus from SLA, uh, Wanda from Tawa, a truly international um, uh, group, including Calgary, focused on uh, what our future will look like. Look like. Thank you for participating in today's discussion. Uh, and thanks to all of you, whether you're at home or in your office, for joining us for today's announcement. If you'd like to learn more uh, about ACT, please visit the Arts Commons website, um, artscommons.ca slash ACT, or you can check out the project page on CMLC's website at calgarymlc.ca. Uh, now, once again, I, um, I'd like to uh, welcome and thank Lila Bialy for performing and sharing her artistry with all of us. Have a great afternoon wherever you are, and thank you again for joining us.